Hey guys, in case you missed the last video, did some burning, got rid of some massive blackberry bushes. We're trying to give one of our sacrifice pastures some TLC. On today's video, we've got to move the Big Joe herd out of pasture one where we're planting this cover crop. We got the trail cameras back out and we've got some great footage, some unusual footage with the bison and some new faces show up at the Ponderosa that we've never caught on trail camera before. And that one pesky critter finally got up close and caught him on camera. It's all right here. Huff, 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 huff. Maya, Jackie, girls. Hey, 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 hey. You know, where's your brush at? It's in the, uh, <clears throat> in the pub. There's spots. Yeah. Is that dappling? I don't know what that's called, but. I don't know, bro. Hi, right, guys. We are back. It's day two. Did some brush hogging yesterday. Did some burning. One of my favorite things. Knocked out a whole bunch of blackberries. Rain will be here in a couple days, and so I'm hustling to get all this done. Thankful for Daniel at Arms Family Homestead. Got me hooked up with his woods super seeder and his TYM tractor. Got some seed in here, mostly rye, mixed in with some other stuff. I don't know what it is. I got some from Kevin, but I got to go to the feed store and get some more rye. I'm changing things up a little bit. I talked about breaking up the poop first and then doing the cover crop, planting our seeds but we may flip flop that. We're gonna see how the cedar does. It may break up uh, all the manure. A couple months ago, back in September, planted our first cover crop, which is out here in uh, pasture two, but uh, we're gonna attack pasture one and get some TLC for it. All seeded up and we are going to get a cover crop on this pasture. Uh, the first thing that we gotta do though, is we've gotta get the Big Joe herd all of them, I think there's 35 of them in there. We've got to get them out of pasture one now so I can run the cover crop. So they're going to pasture three. Marissa and I are going to do it right now.
I got it. Sorry, <laughs> I thought you said it was on the I'm about out of seed, but I really want to make sure and really get some seed down where these blackberry bushes were. These invasive blackberry bushes have been present at the Ponderosa since we got the property in October of 2021. The summer of 2023, we did a lot of spraying. And when I say spraying, the only chemical that we use at the ranch is Remedy, and it's only used to attack these invasive blackberries. Don't get me wrong, we love to eat our blackberries in late June and early July when they're nice and purple and ready to eat. But if these aren't managed, they'll take over your entire pasture, your fence lines, and everywhere else that you don't manage. Don't forget, these invasive blackberries won't let bison graze near them because they're so thorny. They can take over your rangeland and your pasture land very quickly, which can cause a loss of grazing ground for your animals. And in this case, our bison. So we sprayed them, I burned them, I expect some of them to come back, but instead of this ground being bare over winter, we're going to go ahead and plant some cover crop. In this cover crop, we're planting mostly rye with some wheat. Burning these blackberry bushes and vines put nutrients back into the soil with all the ash. And now with the cover crop, can really help this pasture get back in shape and ready for the bison come this summer. Having grass growing in these bare spots will not only help us with grazing for our bison, but hopefully minimize erosion and water runoff. I do expect some of these blackberries to come back because they're that tough and hard to stop. But we'll be ready when they come back and they won't be as large as they previously were and we'll be able to handle the regrowth. See all this ash, basically all nutrients here. Don't want to leave the ground bare, so. We've got a big old hole, and there's some seeds right there. An armadillo hole or something. Try to get some of these seeds to grow in here. Here's a perfect example of what our two main sacrifice pastures are. You can see the Ponderosa barn from here. Pasture one, which is on the north, and then pasture two, which is just to the south. What we mean by sacrifice is these two pastures are the most heavily grazed and occupied pastures in the entire property. This is not our first cover crop. Pasture two to the south here, you can tell the color difference that it's much greener then pasture one to the north, which is just the one we're working on today. Pasture two was the first time we ever planted a cover crop, which consisted of rye, oats, hairy vetch, and crimson clover. We planted those cover crops back in September. With the slow growth over the winter, which is normal, and hopefully with some good rainfall and some sunlight and warmer temperatures for the soil, we hope that we can graze this starting in April. 
very thankful for some followers that were excited about the cover crop talk and actually sent us some seeds. Thank you. I think this is something that we'll keep doing in the future. Definitely a learning moment for Marissa and I. I don't know about you, but every time I get my ISD card and plug it into the computer, I get excited about what I could potentially see on these trail cameras at the Ponderosa. In the last video, a couple piggies showed up in Pasture 3 pond area, right where the bison were grazing. The piggies were out there as well. Well, this time I was able to finally get some up close of these pigs, specifically this white one that we had been watching. I told my brother-in-law, Daniel, from Arms Family Homestead about the pigs that have showed up at the Ponderosa. Well, he excitedly offered to bring over one of his pig traps. Now that we've got these pigs on camera coming in on the daily, I think that's something that we're going to do. But the pigs weren't the only ones that would show up on camera. Of course, here's our princess, Eleanor, coming to get a nice back scratch on some of the pecan trees around the area. With some up close shots of the camera, you can also see some of the damage that's been left behind from just one pig, more than likely. But for the first time personally ever caught on camera was Mr. Peppery Le Pew. Very common in these parts of Oklahoma and this part of the country is the striped skunk, native to Oklahoma. But my attention to detail came clear when I noticed that after looking at this footage, we didn't have just one skunk. We had three different skunks. Take a look at the size of the stripes here. You can clearly see, even by the size of the body, what the big, large, white stripe was potentially the oldest skunk, and then the other two had thinner stripes as well on their sides. As long as they stay away from the Ponderosa barn and away from Jackie, we'll be just fine. Something unusual that I thought I'd never see on a trail camera were these buzzards. I've noticed large gatherings of these buzzards here recently that are flying around the area of Murray County. It must be a season thing, but I'm not sure and I don't know a lot about buzzards. But it was kind of unique to see them on the trail camera. So everything that we've seen here at this camera, just in this specific part of Pasture 3 facing the pond, we've seen buzzards, skunks, pigs, and bison, and deer, all in one area, all caught on the same camera. Take a look and also listen in as this pig, which I think is a boar, is eating some of the native pecans that have fallen from the tree here recently. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys for watching us. We'll just keep bossing ranching. Thank you guys.